Using a non-marring pry tool, take off the side bolsters off of the center console. It helps to remove any additional trays you may have in the center console. Next, we'll remove the shift knob using the pry tool or a pick to release the shift boot collar off of the shift knob. Just to give you guys a better view of it, you're gonna have one of these clips on either side, so just pry on one of them and pull the boot down to release it. Next, we'll remove both of these plastic pieces using a non-marring pry tool, starting from the bottom, working our way up. To remove the last clip, uh, you could wiggle it away from the dash and pull it out at the same time, but you can also do it with the pry tool if you get in deep enough. Now we need to remove some Phillips head screws to keep us from uh, losing anything or, or forgetting when they go once we put everything back. We're going to mark a lot of these components with masking tape and bag everything individually. Now we'll use our pry tool to come in from the back of this center piece. And to give you a good visual of where all the retaining clips are on this piece, here's the bottom side of it. You have one right here in the center towards the back, and then you have two up here on either side. These two, you could pry directly on them on this tab here uh, by prying up against this uh, base. But these, uh, they're a little bit trickier, so you have to use your hands and pull up from both sides. And depending on your vehicle and what options you might have, you have a couple clip connectors Nothing too crazy, they all just have simple release mechanisms. So just press in the release clip and pull them out. Now we'll remove the climate control panel and simply come in from the sides with your pry tool to release the retaining clips. Similar idea with these clips, they're pretty straightforward. They have simple release mechanisms just disconnect those to take the panel off. Next, we'll release the three mounting screws using a Phillips head driver. Next, we can remove this whole assembly. Now we'll remove the power outlet and USB panel. Just to give you guys an up close look, uh, there's a little opening here. You wanna come in with your pick to pull on this and it'll release these mounting tabs on the back. Once those are loose, just keep prying it open and these tabs will release from the top. As for the connectors, it's pretty straightforward. Once again, uh, simple release buttons on the back of this and on the side of the power outlet. Next, we need to remove all the mounting clips holding the harness to the panels. Can get a little bit tricky. Uh, you can use picks, pry bars, or just a knife or some pliers to cut them. Uh, you won't really need them in the future. It's just really, uh, I think, there to help during the assembly of the car. But you know, after these installs, we ran the car without them, and there's no real noises or rattles that are apparent when driving it.
now we'll remove the protective panel found on the bottom of the center console. Again, make sure to keep track of all the nuts and bolts so you know where they go once you assemble everything back. And just to gain access to one of the connectors before we actually remove the center console, we'll take off this back panel using our non-marring pry tool in between the seam of the panel and the console itself. Also, it does help if you move the seats forward as much as you can, just to give you a little bit of extra room to pry at it more easily. Now we can remove the center console in its entirety. Now there is one last connector to watch out for, which is directly behind the shift lever assembly. You wanna get that from underneath, pull up on the center console a bit, try to get at it from underneath and pull it off and release that USB cable uh, by pressing in on the retaining clip. It also helps once again to have the transmission in fourth gear so that the lever is out of the way as much as possible.